There has been a ton of interest for B550 motherboards and rightfully so, but I think the big question that a lot of people are asking is are they really worth it? Because on many cheaper B450 motherboards, you do get Ryzen 3000 support out of the box and future Ryzen 4000 series support. The power circuitry is also strong enough for the majority of users and you can save a ton of cash instead of going for X570. So today I have two B550 ITX boards up for testing, MSI's B550i Edge Gaming AC and ASUS's B550i ROG Strix. And the comparison goes in the other direction as well. How close is B550 compared to X570? And maybe the more important question is how close is the pricing? So let's take a look. Now I think the biggest reason for all of the hype behind B550 was the native support for Ryzen 3000 CPUs out of the box, and more importantly, the future support for next generation Ryzen processors, Zen 3. That way users didn't have to worry about possibly receiving a board with an older BIOS that didn't support third gen Ryzen CPUs, and they wouldn't need to buy a new board if they needed to upgrade to the next generation. But all of that B550 hype kind of fizzled out when AMD announced that they would actually be supporting fourth generation Ryzen CPUs on B450 and X470 motherboards. So that'll be done via a BIOS update. And if your motherboard has the BIOS flashback option, you'll be able to easily update the BIOS on those B450 and X470 boards without a second or third gen Ryzen CPU. Now with B450, especially on an ITX motherboard, I really do feel like it's stacked enough in terms of how many USB ports and the bandwidth of the PCIe lanes that you're getting. B550 in comparison, you do get PCIe PCIe 4.0 enabled on those CPU based lanes. So for both your graphics card and your primary M.2 drive, you also get faster USB. Even with a Titan RTX though, the most powerful GPU that you can currently buy right now, you will not see a performance benefit here with that higher bandwidth ceiling. Now there are M.2 NVMe drives out there that can saturate a Gen 3 slot. So that's something to consider if you need the absolute fastest peak transfer speeds out there. In general though, PCIe Gen 4 should not be the sole reason that you're buying into B550. And then bumping up to X570, you do get PCIe PCIe 4.0 lanes throughout the entire chipset and more lanes in total also faster and more USB and more SATA ports. So if you're building a Ryzen 9 mid tower workstation, this could possibly be worth it for you. But for ITX boards, you're just not going to benefit from the majority of those extra ports and lanes. There's just no physical room for them on the board. But enough talk about PCIe lanes and the chipset differences because there are other more important differences between these boards. One thing I'm glad to see on B550 is a USB Type-C front panel header. So finally, this is becoming more common since we're seeing Type-C on a lot more cases these days. Another one is Wi-Fi 6 networking and I've personally seen users make their choice of motherboard based on this alone. You won't find this on B450 without an external controller. Also, B550 does not require active cooling like X570 does, so the physical chipset itself does not draw that much power to the point that it does need one of those small fans on the board. You will still see some active cooling on these ITX boards just to help out with VRM or M.2 cooling. So for example, the ROG Strix board has it for the VRM and then the MSI board has it for the M.2 drive. I've personally never been bothered by those small fans. I do actually appreciate them for the additional cooling that they provide. But at the end of the day, if they do bother you that much, you can just unplug them. Now, if the upgrade list of B550 hasn't sounded so great so far, then I totally get you because it's mostly just faster IO, but we're also getting a much beefier VRM. This stands as one of the biggest distinctions between B450 and X570, especially on ITX boards where you are limited physically with how many PCIe lanes you can put on the board anyway. And at least with these two B550 ITX boards here, we are getting a nice upgrade. The ASUS B550i Strix gets upgraded to an eight plus two phase VRM with 50 amp power stages, but do note that's not eight true PWM phases, just like their X570i board. Still though, a lot more output than any B450 ITX board that you'll find out there. 
The B550i board from MSI also gets an upgrade over B450 with eight power stages dedicated to CPU power and another two for the SoC, and these are 60 amp power stages. MSI also claim that this is an eight plus two PWM setup, but I do believe they're running two power stages per PWM phase, just like the B550i ROG Strix. Now, when it comes to VRM thermals under load, here's what we're looking at. I tested all four boards with the 16 core Ryzen 3950X and overclock that to 4.2 gigahertz across all cores at a voltage of 1.28 volts. The stress test here, Blender, is one of the most demanding real-world workloads that you can put this CPU through. It's a 30-minute render and we're testing on an open test bench with no direct airflow. So we can see here that the two B550 boards are a massive upgrade in terms of VRM output and really aren't too far off the X570 board. Of course, you can go a bit higher than 1.28 volts on a Ryzen 3950X, but you probably don't have that level of CPU cooling capacity anyway in an ITX case. Again, this represents one of the worst case scenarios that you can put these boards through. So at this point, B550 is looking like a pretty solid choice, but just keep in mind that you will need to pay for those upgrades. The B550i ROG Strix, for example, is listed at around $230 US, which makes it around $40 or so less than the X570i version, and $80 or so more than the B450i version. But honestly, with pricing and stock so sporadic at the moment, I'm really hesitant to make any recommendations based off of pricing alone. So I will kind of make these recommendations based off of the CPUs that you might be pairing these boards with. I still think the B450i Strix is a great pair for CPUs like the 3300X, 3600, and 3700X, especially if it allows you to save a bit of cash and then upgrade to a faster CPU or memory kit. Those processes will most likely be for gaming and light production workload type builds, and you definitely don't need a super beefy VRM for those tasks. And then we have the B550i, which can really hold its own even when paired all the way up to an overclocked 3950X. So for a 12 core or 16 core rendering build, B550 is absolutely a sensible choice. Also, if you really wanna run a high speed memory kit alongside your CPU, for example, a low latency kit above 3200 megahertz, don't bother with a B450 board in my opinion, as it's just too much of a gamble. Just opt straight for a B550 or X570. And then honestly, X570 is a bit of a hard sell over B550 based off of specs alone, but you do get a slightly stronger VRM and more IO. I'd only recommend this for enthusiast Ryzen builds where spending that extra cash doesn't make a difference to the rest of your build, but really at the end of the day, it does come down to that pricing in your region. At least here in Australia, there's a $180 AUD difference, which works out to be around 120 USD. So in that case, B550 would be the smarter choice over X570 in my opinion. If I had to pick between the MSI and ASUS B550i boards here, it would honestly just come down to price I would just choose the cheapest one available. The MSI board doesn't have a 12 volt RGB header like the ASUS board does, and I'm not a fan of putting the front panel connector all the way down to the bottom left of the board. However, both of them are very, very similar. They both have a BIOS flashback, three four pin fan headers, a front panel type C connector, and also a fairly similar clearance when it comes to CPU heat sinks. VRM thermal performance is also very close within a few degrees. So hopefully that helps you guys out if you are planning a new Ryzen ITX build in the near future. And if you are interested in any of these boards or other ones that I recommend, I will leave them linked down below in the description. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.